What's up guys? We're doing another freaking Phyllis episode and this episode is brought to you in part by only because we purchased Taco Bell. <laughs> We're freaking hungry and it's Tuesday, Taco Tuesday. But we figured we'd break from having our guest on for a second to talk about some random crap that's been going on. There's a ton of stuff going on in both the fighting world and in the gaming world, which we are both avid fans of. Which ironically is in the real world. Yeah. So I guess there's a lot of stuff going on in the real in the real world <laughs> everywhere. Yes. But dude, uh, so first thing I guess we could talk about since it happened this weekend is the fights, man. UFC 238. Freaking kind of a weird card. It, it, was, it was one of the weirdest cards that I've seen like all year. Like yeah. it had to be. I just, uh, I don't know, man, like... The vibe of the card was even weird. That's what threw me off, yeah. Because, like, I, I mean, for Tony Ferguson and Cowboy Cerrone to be a not main event, for me, that was kind of weird, because I was like, ah, fuck, I really like Cowboy Cerrone a lot, and I was kind of hoping that they would be, uh... Do you like lettuce? Yeah, I'm fine. All right, here you go. I'm gonna hook you up with that right. lettuce taco. But, uh, <laughs> Cowboy Cerrone and Tony Ferguson not being the main event threw me off a lot. Like, honestly, I really expected them to be the main event. And they went. But three rounds, and it ended so horribly, dude. He what, freaking, was it the end of the second? End of the second round, mm -hmm. going into the third. Yeah, in the right. first round, I had it one for one, man. I had both fighters winning a round. Yeah. And uh, that's, the first, like, that's the first time that I've seen Cerrone do extremely well under yeah. pressure. Yeah. Like, he, was, he was actually pushing forward a little more. And any time... Uh, Ferguson came in. He was catching him, catching him with jab yeah. before he could get to him. Yeah, he did such a good job of keeping his distance and stuff. So I don't know, man. But yeah, I feel like one and one is how I kind of scored that, and they have to play that fight back, dude. Yeah. I don't. So basically, what happened was um, <clears throat> Tony Ferguson. He landed a late hit, but it didn't mm -hmm. affect what happened. Everybody's gonna sit there and talk yeah. about like it, I, I don't. I know he didn't mean to do it. Cause, yeah, I mean, when you're in that situation, like you hear the bell ring, and uh, if you're a fighter, just just about everything you base on like rules mm -hmm. comes from the ref. Yeah, and what happened in that situation is the ref did not step in. Yeah, when the bell rang. Yeah, I mean, he it was it, it was yeah it was ninety it was fifty percent of the ref's fault and fifty percent Tony Ferguson's fault. Yeah, but, but I mean. He hit, he hit Donald Cerrone late. It was on the, like, chin area mm -hmm. with the jab. But, but uh, when that round ended, Donald Cerrone went to his corner. His eye was kind of messed up. His nose was probably broken or mm -hmm. hurt really bad. And right before the round started, he blew his nose. And yeah. his eye just went... Poof. Dude, it literally just swole up like a freaking... I've never seen just that single eye do that. It and was maybe that's why it was so bad. But it was yeah. instantaneous. The mm -hmm. moment he did that, his eye just, like... Filled yeah. up with air and he uh -huh. couldn't see, so they had to stop the fight. Yeah, but in two, I saw a, uh, I saw like an Instagram post from Cerrone afterwards, and he just posted this today. But he was talking about how like there's no break; it was just it was just air, yeah, uh, even totally in the X-ray. I saw so that good. same post. Yeah, he said he's just waiting for his next fight. So <laughs> a rematch or his next fight? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know, man. I hope that they run that fight back, and I hope that they do a main event. Even if it's a freaking fight night main event, that needs to happen, dude. Five rounds should happen with those two fighters. It's insane that it was a three-round fight. Yeah. But then... And I then, think, like, honestly, if I look back on it, I think the reason they made it three rounds was for Donald Cerrone's sake, because he had just fought, like, 30 days prior. Mm-hmm. I could see that. But, uh... It was kind of weird because the mood after that fight, it's kind of like you just were waiting for that fight. And then after the fight happened, you're like, oh yeah, there's more fights. Mm -hmm. And it, like, Shevchenko being the follow up fight was a perfect thing because, dude, that fight was so freaking nuts. It, uh, Shevchenko won in the second round by that head kick knockout. And, Dude, I think that's done everybody there. Everybody that was at the fight, everybody's Except like... Except Shevchenko. Yeah, she was just walking around like she knew. <clears throat> I already knew that Shevchenko was, in my opinion, Shevchenko is one of the like best female fighters yeah. in MMA period. Yeah, I agree. Like, she's, she's right up there 
with Amanda Nunez. Mm -hmm. Like, she could beat just about anybody throw in front of her. Yeah. She, I mean, as far as that goes, and she's an went assassin. five rounds with Amanda like, Nunez. I mean, yeah. beat Holly Holm, which Amanda Nunez her is her own game. game. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think she set that head kick up perfectly, too, because in the first round, she was going to the body. And I mean, it sounded like you were just hitting a freaking punching bag with a baseball bat whenever the she hit her. The first strike that she nuts. threw mm -hmm. was a power body kick, and mm -hmm. it landed flush. It did. <laughs> it looked painful, dude. And I'm surprised Jessica didn't go down then. So that was pretty impressive. But like, she landed two more of those, I think, or just two in total of those uh, body kicks, and then went to the head in the second round and caught her so off guard, mm -hmm. just freaking looked like it would have knocked her forehead out into the crowd, dude. It was such a hard kick. It would have dropped anybody, dude. But, uh, yeah, that was a really good way to, like, come back from that Ferguson fight. Because I think mm -hmm. every... It, and it shocked enough people, I think, to be like, all right, well, the first fight, that was crazy. But, holy shit, that just happened. Mm -hmm. So, I feel like that was a really good rebound fight after that one. But... And I don't know who they're going to put her up against next, man. That division, I have no clue. Uh, they were talking about that Tatiana girl. Oh, yeah. But... If she tries to go in there and grapple with her, she's got another thing coming. If she yeah. tries to go in there and strike with her, like she's not, Tatiana's not gonna try to strike with mm -hmm. Bullet Valentina. I don't think anybody after watching that is gonna try to do that. <laughs> no. And just like, uh, they're putting Holly Holm up against uh, Amanda Nunez now. It's like kind of gonna be one of those striker versus what they're considering Amanda Nunez a striker <laughs> because she knocked out Chris Cyborg. But like, honestly, that's not a really good matchup, man. You know? Because I think that... I really believe Holly Holm is going to yeah. gonna give her a run. <clears throat> Holly's a lot more of a technical striker, and she has power. She's a Whereas Amanda yeah. Nunez is more of a... She just went in there and bulldozed over her cyborg, but mm -hmm. it's because nobody was expecting her to just go in there and, like, do that. Yeah. Nobody expected it. Not even cyborg. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's what happens, I think. Cyborg is just a little overly you know i guess kind of on her own hype train and uh but i mean that's what cyborg did in all of her fights yeah she just bulldozed, pe bulldozed people i just don't think they thought that nunez was gonna do that you know mm -hmm. i think i don't think cyborg thought for a second <laughs> nunez is gonna stand and bang with me yeah i mean that's what happened man and she got out outmatched but it was just i mean she got caught it's pretty much what mm -hmm. it was because you, you what, go back and watch that fight and you can see actually nunez was shook a few times too <clears throat> and everybody just makes it seem like Amanda Nunez just freaking smashed Chris Cyborg which she did at the end there but she also got caught a few times too and uh to smash Nunez you've got to be patient mm -hmm. you've got to wait for the barrage and counter before she hits you with that first punch yeah you counter and I think Holly Holmes <clears throat> that really I think she's got a great chance of winning that belt but like that's what I'm saying, and for Valentina Shevchenko, I don't know where, where she goes after this. She's pretty much saying, like, that's her weight class. Like, that's where she wants to be at. So I don't think she's going to try to go up or down mm -mm. And, uh, and fight other people. I think she's just going to end up being a uh, Demetrius Johnson and just owning that division. Which, I mean, <laughs> why not, man? Yeah. I don't know. I think everybody now is looking at stuff like this champ champ situation. Like, you have to be a champ champ to be a legit champion or mm -hmm. something. But, like, people forget about people like Demetrius Johnson, Stipe Miocic, whenever he was on his reign. I mean, like, fighters like that just owning their division, I think that's a huge thing, too. But you were talking about uh, um, uh, Bad Guy Inc., his podcast. He was talking about that, uh, what's his name? <clears throat> the Henry Cerruto fight. But you were talking about the champ champ situation? Yeah. Um... These tacos are good. <laughs> um, I know, man. Anyway. I'm good. Um, yeah, Chel Sonnen. Like him or not, he is a really intelligent person, and he knows mm -hmm. what he's talking about 99% of the time. That's why I like Chel Sonnen, dude. He's, he's he's not, and he's not afraid to say it. Yeah. Because who the hell cares, right? So, I mean, he's a heel, but I think... Once people get past the fact that like that's kind of what his gimmick is, almost in a sense, yeah, he's a very smart person. Yeah, it's totally a gimmick. <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> he was talking about how 
if you look at the situations, like everybody always talks about size advantage. Mm-hmm. He's got the size advantage. He's got the reach advantage. He was like, but in the case of the, uh, some of the greatest fighters that have ever lived, it has always been a size disadvantage that gives him the advantage. Yeah. Mike Tyson, he was like 220 pounds, mm-hmm. always the smallest heavyweight, mm-hmm. never had the reach advantage, knocked people out cold, can be considered one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Yeah. One of them. Yeah. Muhammad Ali was the same way. Mm-hmm. He was like 190 pounds, something like that. I didn't know pounds. that, but I knew yeah. he was smaller. Yeah, and he was he was always a smaller guy. Didn't have as much power, but he was still beating the crap out of everybody in the heavyweight mm-hmm. division. Mm-hmm. And then, if you look at the champ champ situations in the UFC, it has always been the smaller guy moving up and becoming the champ champ. Mm-hmm. I mean, everyone. <clears throat> uh, Conor McGregor, Daniel Cormier, Henry Cejudo now. Um, mm-hmm. George St. Pierre moved up to middleweight and beat Michael Bisping. Yeah. I don't think he, he didn't have the belt at that time. Not at the time, but he did. I mean, but he still, re- left with the belt, though, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he uh, he won and he vacated the belt or whatever. Damn. And then back in the day, Randy Couture did it, mm-hmm. but he moved up. He, he didn't carry the. He, did, he wasn't a champ champ. Yeah, yeah. But, but he had he, been the champ at light heavyweight and mm-hmm. then he was the champ at heavyweight mm-hmm. later on. It's hard to look at these guys and think heavyweight. I mean, like. For instance, Chuck Liddell. It's crazy to think that guy was heavyweight at a point. Didn't he fight in pride at heavyweight? I think he did. Yeah, I think he did, actually. And it's kind of crazy <laughs> to look at him and be like, dude, he seems like a shorter guy, but he's actually a pretty tall dude. Yeah, but like the he he was explaining that the it's always the guy that's just a weight class below you that's going to give you the most or the hardest time mm-hmm. in a fight because they're not cutting any weight. They're just staying at their natural weight yeah. so they have all of the stamina they have that extra speed they carry their power with them yeah and it's basically like an improved version of whoever you're fighting in a yeah way. which who are we talking about it's moving up to 205 um chris wideman yes that is gonna be freaking after trouble hearing, dude after hearing chelsea and talk about that i was like oh my god yeah i'm like, really stoked about that chris fight. wideman could actually give so many people a lot of trouble at mm-hmm. like heavyweight I mean, obviously, right now he's calling out Jones, but I want to see give him, a lot of people. Trouble. I mean, anybody in that division, I would love to see him fight. I would love to see him fight Glover Teixeira. Mm-hmm. I would love to see him fight freaking Anthony Smith or Johnny Walker. Dude, Johnny Walker right now, I think, is on everybody's radar. He is like pretty much. I think the reason that a lot of people like him is because he's not such a smart ass version of. John Jones. Mm-hmm. Like, he reminds a lot of people of John Jones. He reminds me of John Jones, but he's just like, personality-wise, he doesn't have all those all those personality flaws. Which, so far, I can't get a good read on him. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's looked phenomenal, mm-hmm. but I mean, he hasn't his total really had a time is like less than a minute, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And he, he really hasn't been tested fully, so I think that's what a lot of people are kind of like, have reservations for him in that sense, because he really hasn't been tested. But... I think he's he's been talking about like coming back, and I don't know when his next fight's going to be, but he said he wants to be more active than he has been. He just had to kind of wait and make sure his shoulders are okay, which he didn't know if that was something that, you know, I mean, maybe he had been fighting already and, uh, like, been fighting with that injury, you know? Yeah. So I'd like to see him fight Anthony Smith next. Anthony Smith? Mm-hmm. That would be a freaking interesting fight, too. I think that that fight right there, would decide who gets to fight Jones. Mm-hmm. I mean, Anthony Smith, I don't think he deserves a rematch right now because mm-hmm. John Jones shut him down. He, he needs did. one more fight to prove himself to get that rematch. Yeah. And then Johnny Walker, everybody's talking about, oh, what about him and John Jones? Well, that's the that's the fight that's going to tell you whether he's ready for John Jones or not. Yeah. Anthony Smith really impressed me with that fight that he just had. And uh, he put a clinic on Gusha for him. He did. But he also showed how tough his chin is. Yeah. Because he took some shots. He really did, man. Got to see it, fighting in, like, fighting an opponent in their hometown, in their home country, is a huge disadvantage for a lot of people, man. Mm-hmm. Going there and fighting. Mm-hmm. I mean, too, just like, if nothing else, the time difference, you know? Like, you might have jet lag and stuff like that. Yeah. But, like, just the time difference, getting your body used to it and stuff like that. I'd like to think that they were probably there for at least that week, you know? Mm-hmm. Maybe help you, but even still, like... You're on their home court, man. It plays a big advantage in their mental mindset and all that stuff as well. But, uh, 
But I don't know. I think that would be a really good fight, dude. I think Smith would make sense for for him next because I don't know who else they're going to end up putting him against at light I mean, heavyweight. He could fight Teixeira, mm-hmm. but I just I like the idea of him and Smith fighting. That's just really a fight, fight that I'd want to see. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, Bellator is having their big event this weekend. Um, Chel Sonnen is fighting Oh yeah, yeah. Vegeta. Mm-hmm. That's a good matchup. I don't care who you are. If you know both of those fighters, yeah. that's a good freaking matchup. Yeah. Is that going to be on DAZN or is that going to be on like Paramount? I don't know. I don't either. They've been putting everything on DAZN and it kind of sucks for me because I'm like, ah, I don't know that I want to buy another freaking subscription to another network, you know? I swear to God, these subscriptions, man, they're killing people. It, like seriously, like some somebody, what what they need to do is somebody needs to come up and conglomerate a lot of these networks into mm-hmm. a package deal mm-hmm. somehow and call but it they won't do it cable. because there's not as much money in that yeah it's the, it's the main reason that they're separate apps to begin with yeah because they want to make more money they want to make more money and it's just hurting everyone it's the blessing and the curse of capitalism man mm-hmm. like you know they're like Oh, I gotta make more profits, gotta make more profits, gotta make more profits. Well, there's only a certain amount of people in the world that are gonna be interested in what you're selling. And can actually spare that much money every month. Yeah, exactly. So eventually you're gonna peak out, and eventually you're gonna either stay at that spot or decline in views. And I mean, charging the same amount of viewers more money for the same thing it's not the way to get more money in your company overall. It's probably a good way of grasping at straws, but it's not like a long term. This is how you're going to fix it. Especially when the people who are buying your app first are the people that have been watching your stuff yeah. for years and they're willing to spend that money mm-hmm. to support your company and watch the fights. Yeah. So it's like you're shooting your own fans, mm-hmm. like right in the hand or the foot. Yeah. And I don't see it getting any better. Honestly, every single pay-per-view that we've bought ever since the ESPN Plus deal has gone through, I've messaged ESPN Plus, and I'm like, hey, it's kind of bullshit that you're like, oh, you know, a special members-only pricing for the pay-per-view is supposed to be like $59.99. They charge me extra on every single one. Every single time I buy from them, they charge me extra. And then they just sent me an email today, and they were like, oh, well, we've had a little price increase. But they told me that it was like fifty nine ninety nine whenever I bought it, and then they charged me more than that. So it's like every single time that I buy a pay per view from them, I get burned, and it, it's just been pissing me off, man. And they crap, they just don't care. They're like, yeah, either watch it or don't. Uh, but fuck you, either way, you know. Mm-hmm. If you want to watch it, watch it. If you don't, then don't do it. It's just bullshit, man. Because I feel like they feel like they have just a monopoly on on it right now on ESPN with the UFC deal that they've signed and it's just kind of it it definitely doesn't show any loyalty to your customers you know to your Mm -hmm. fan base it just shows like all you're caring about right now is getting money yeah I think they're losing a lot dude I mean as far as pay-per-view buys have gone I don't know that they've broke a hundred thousand since they've made that ESPN plus deal I think whenever they whenever they actually get in get in there and they look at their numbers they're gonna start reevaluating shit Mm mm-hmm I don't know when that's going to be. I think it's probably going to be in a year or so. Is but bleeding? Yeah, dude. I mean, their first pay-per-view on ESPN didn't do... I think it was the lowest numbers that they've had in... I can't remember how many years. And then they were like, oh, there's just glitches. There's just glitches right now. We'll fix it out for the next one. Which, they have done it now. We're on the ESPN Plus app. <clears throat> you can actually buy the pay-per-view now. <coughs> it's still flawed, though. I mean... Having to pay so much money a month, and then on top of that, having to buy the pay per view mm-hmm. at full price is kind of fucked up, man. And what if you don't want to buy that subscription service, but you do want to buy the pay per view? They don't even allow that as an option. It's like, what the fuck are you guys doing, man? Yeah. It's so stupid. So, <clears throat> and then the last fight on that pay per view was the Henry Ceruta fight. And. I still don't like the guy, man. He's the champ champ now, but he's the champ champ of cringe to me. And Henry I just... Cejudo is the... He has the worst personality of any fighter mm-hmm. I have ever seen in my entire life. And I've been watching the... I've been watching MMA for over 15 years, probably. Yeah. And I've never seen anyone 
as cringy and awful as that guy. Yeah. It's like they need to get somebody that he's writes... He's a great fighter. Yeah. But he sucks as a human being. <laughs> sucks. Absolutely. I think, I think it's getting him in front of a lot of people or whatever for the wrong reasons, but some people look at any press as good press. But I think if he would go to the old school Brock Lesnar lane and just <clears throat> not talk yeah. and just be a scary guy or something. Like, completely honest, honest here. When I first saw him fight, I liked him. Mm-hmm. Because he didn't, he was just, he went in there and he did work and he was beating people left and right. Yeah. And the first time he fought uh, Demetrius Johnson, I actually was like, I think he's the first person to actually really give Demetrius Johnson mm -hmm. a hard time. Yeah. Which Demetrius Johnson beat him. Mm-hmm. But, God, he just turned into this freaking, like... <laughs> he's just too full of himself, I he's think. So and then, like, the at the weigh-ins where he's, like, shaking... And mm -hmm. just looking stupid, but it's like he's taking a note right out of Conor McGregor. So yeah. It's like he watched the pay-per-view that, or it's like he watched the freaking weigh-ins with him previously, and he was like, well, if Conor's doing it, I guess I'll do it too. I'm like, dude, it just does not work with you, Henry. Mm -hmm. You need to you need to pump the brakes, man. Just, no. just pump the brakes. But, I don't know. He's champ champ now, and he's got a gold belt. I don't know, if, or gold medal. Gold I don't know medal. if anybody heard that or not. But... <clears throat> I He's mean, talking about fighting all these legends. Mm hmm. And he names people like Cody Garbrandt. And I'm like, Cody Garbrandt's got a glass jaw now. Do you realize that he is on a three fight losing streak? Yeah, he called out him. He called out. Uh, That's legendary to you? Yeah. He won the belt and never defended it? Never. That's legendary. Come on, man. Mm hmm. <laughs> Shut up. That was like the dumbest post fight interview that I've seen in a long time, man. Like, the, my balls is hot, hilariously stupid. Mm -hmm. Henry Cerruto, epic failure, stupid. He was like, I'm going to call a lot of people out by name right now. Dominic Cruz, injured. I'm calling you out. Fucking, uh, and who's... Fought in however many years. Yeah, and then he said, Uriah Faber, I'm calling you out, putting you on notice. Dude's like fucking 50 years old and, like, hasn't fought in 50 years. Barely coming out of retirement just now. I know, yeah. To fight, um, God, I can't remember his name, but he is a tough fight. Mm -hmm. That guy's going to put Uriah Faber in a coffin. Yeah. And then he called out fucking Cody Garbrandt. Those are the three people he called out. And he was like, I'll move to any weight class. I do respect the fact that he's like, I'll move up another weight class. That would be awesome to see him do that. Because I think he wants to take what uh, TJ was doing and be like the three divisional champ or go for that. And that's a pretty cool idea, man. I think whoever ends up claiming that first is going to be a badass dude. But uh, I just, I, I swear, hope it's, I not hope it's not, yeah, yeah. I hope it's not him. <laughs> yeah. But I almost feel like that. A natural light heavyweight is going to end up capturing that. I feel like a natural light heavyweight is going to move up to heavyweight and then be able to move down a little bit in weight class. I think that would be probably the most preferable thing. Because being a freaking, what is he, Henry Cerruto is like a flyweight, right? Yeah. So that's what, 125? Yeah, and then moving up to Bantam 135. <clears throat> and then from there moving up a weight class. I mean, that like, I don't know how much he cuts to get to 125. I think he said he... He fights at like 140 though. I think once he cuts weight, so He's maybe featherweight champion right now. Hmm. Is it still a? Uh, what's his name? I'm gonna feel really stupid if I get this wrong, but I think like, that I, it's. I uh, totally can't remember. Uh, hold on. Whenever I say it, you're gonna be like, oh, "Okay." God, what is wrong with me? His. Uh, I know these. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, Max. Oh, Max, Max Holloway. Holloway. God yeah. dang it. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, but I was like, is he featherweight? I'm pretty sure he is. So, he's moved around so much recently. Yeah. That I'm just like, yeah. Cause, I well, he moved him. up, and then he was like, yeah, I'm just going to stay down here. Because he lost to Dustin Poirier. Yeah. Which, dude, like, you know, I think that fight's going to be huge. Dustin Poirier is hopefully going to beat Khabib Ganaman mm -hmm. off. But, yeah, I think there's a lot of really good fights coming up in UFC. I mean, you've got, like, the Khabib fight in September. Hopefully, Dustin wins. And we've talked about this, but, like, Dustin winning that belt could be the best thing for that division because mm -hmm. if Dustin wins, then he can fight either 
Tony Ferguson or Cowboy, if they end up getting a rematch and then that rematch fighting him, but I mean, as of right now, it's probably going to be Ferguson. Yeah, if Dustin Poirier wins, there's a lot of good matchups to make. Yeah. Even Justin Gagey can be thrown in there, you know? Yeah, and we were talking about this, like, <laughs> since everybody's trying to get that khabib Connor fight again, it would be better if they did that at not a, like, not at a championship level, mm -hmm. and then that would give them, like, you know, it's not holding up that division. Yeah. In a sense, because if they just keep on throwing Connor and Khabib, oh, it's a grudge match of the ages. Nobody really gives a shit about seeing that actual fight. Like mm -hmm. maybe, maybe like, like Fairweather fans of UFC care about that fight, but anybody that's a legit like martial arts mixed martial arts fan, I don't think that anybody's really intrigued by that fight mm -hmm. anymore. Because it's got honestly the same to me as when Conor McGregor <clears throat> kept wanting to fight Nate Diaz and they fought the second time. Yes, I mean. The second fight was good, too. It was a good but fight. But I didn't care about it before it happened. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I just feel like if if he ends up losing that belt, I think it would be a better thing for the division because then now it allows for a lot more fights to happen. And yeah. honestly, too, uh, Khabib's talking so much shit about, like, you got to pay me X amount of dollars. I'm the greatest champ. And all this stuff. No, dude. No, you're not. People you haven't have such fought high... the greatest yet. <clears throat> I know. You fought, like... To get to where he is, he fought a dude on like what a few days' notice. It was like a day's notice or some stupid shit yeah. like that. He it fought was like a day notice. on a day notice, beat him. Uh, Ali Quinta, right? Mm -hmm. It was like an Ali Quinta fight, and couldn't finish Ali Quinta. Snooze fest of a fight, and then he beat Conor McGregor to defend the title. Right, that was yeah. the next fight, and I mean, what dude? Conor is on a two fight lose streak or three. I can't remember, but it had been over two years since he had fought, in the, since he had had an MMA fight. Yeah, and he had been training straight boxing. And he still that. went four rounds with him, and he's yeah. not a wrestler. Yeah. So come on, Khabib hasn't fought anybody of note that solidifies him as the greatest. He hasn't. He never fought Eddie Alvarez. No. He never fought Tony Ferguson. He never fought Cerrone. I mean. Yeah, I mean, put somebody <laughs> on your list that I mean, I get it. Probably he's like what twenty seven and zero or something like that right now. But who ha uh, who has he fought? Like one of the highest fighters that he fought that he can even comment on anything about is probably Edson Barbosa. Mm -hmm. But I think that fight's going to really. I hope that fight shakes up the division a lot because there's a lot of talent in there. Just like I feel like it's going to show everybody the true nature of how unprepared Khabib is. Yeah. There's so many, dude, speaking of good divisions, like light heavyweight for me right now, huge. Heavyweight right now, huge. Freaking, there's just so many good divisions right now. Like, there's a lot of good fighters that are going on. But, I mean, heavyweight right now, you've got the Stipe DC fight. After Brock Lesnar has, like, bowed out and held up the division for a whole fucking year, that fight's going to be huge. Because then you're going to be able to introduce more people in there. Like, I think Curtis Blades is badass and, like, legit. He could give the... He, he's got a really good chance to title run. I mean, uh, I would love to see Curtis Blades in DC fight. Dude. That would yes. be such a good fight. Mm -hmm. That would be an awesome fight to make. Francis Ngannou, as much as I didn't like him, he's actually... Like, and he still hasn't proven himself to me because, like, what? He came Velasquez, blew his knee out. Mm -hmm. And then everybody's like, oh, no, he got knocked oh, out. Next no, fight, blew his the next fight, Dos Santos. Yeah. That will be the proof. That will be. If he beats Dos Santos, then I'll be like, all right, he's he's back. Yeah. He's ready. But, I mean, if you look at it, dude, he's definitely got the punching power that's out of this world. So, like, for me, uh oh, I'm going to get this fly. Uh oh. Are we about to have a flies episode <laughs> of the <laughs> podcast? They're just going to look on here and we're going to be, like, covered in flies, like, have a fly suit. <clears throat> oh, we're, like, God. not talking. We're just like, <laughs> you just hear bzzz the whole time. That guy is so loud, too. But either way, I just feel like Francis, he's got extreme punching power, and if he can get any type of, like, his wrestling down, I feel like he'd be a force to be reckoned mm -hmm. with, for sure. But there's just, there's so many good fighters in the heavyweight division. Light heavyweight division is stacked. I mean, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of really good divisions right now. It's a good time Band for right MMA. now, too. Like, there's, there was a still, it, it got kind of stale there for a little mm -hmm. while, because there's so many... So many things going on to, on to hold up so many divisions. Yeah. But now it feels like everything is starting to open up. Mm -hmm. They're finally making the fights that need to be made. 
to fix what's been going on. Mm -hmm. Like John Jones is back, so there's nobody waiting around because he's mm -hmm. out, you know. So and he's been fairly active too. I mean, I like that. I like the fact that a lot more fighters are trying to be more active. Like at least three fights a year. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good now. I mean, like shit, but then you have people like Cerrone and like Johnny Walker was looking before he got kind of injured. <clears throat> You get a lot of fighters that are like fighting like five times a year. I think that's fucking awesome, dude. I mean, why not? If you're young and able, yeah. dude, do it. You're making a shitload of money, you know? That's the only way you're going to make money in the mm -hmm. UFC. If you ain't fighting, <laughs> you ain't getting paid. Yeah, exactly. It's not like you're on salary, man. But, so, that's pretty much what's going on with the UFC right now. There's so much cool shit, and I'm so excited about even the next pay per view and the next few pay per views are going to be freaking out of this world, so. I'm pretty stoked about it, but that brings us to freaking video games. And E3 is going on right now. It is insane, dude. Like, uh, I watched Square en Square Enix's last night, and uh, that looked pretty good. I feel like I've already seen everything that everyone has to offer because ninety percent of it got leaked yeah. before. <laughs> yeah. The cool Which I, f I feel like I feel like they said it was there was some sort of like security breach in like their the server of the e3s <laughs> freaking i don't know what but i mean it's stupid like you have an event that that's huge mm -hmm. or that yeah that's that huge and you <laughs> like don't check your security or yeah. whatever like come on mm -hmm. but square enix the coolest thing i think on that like obviously huge fan of final fantasy 7 re-releasing that or remaking that and that, did you get to see the the Square Enix uh, E3? Mm -mm. Dude, I know you had some reservations about Final Fantasy VII Remake. But if you watch the new fighting systems and stuff that they've actually got, they do a lot more gameplay. And it is so fucking cool. If it's executed properly, which it looks like it is, but if it's playing smoothly as it looks in the demos, it's going to be fucking nuts. It I feel like so I'm not cool. Final Fantasy sometimes because I never really got into it that much. Mm -hmm. But I recognize its like pull, yeah, or the what's to like about it. Yeah, I still don't know why they're releasing it in episodes because I'm like, I think they're doing. Two. Everybody knows what happens. Yeah, it's not like you're keeping a secret from us. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, oh god, the big what, what comes next? So like. <laughs> Maybe they'll swap it up this time and Tifa will die instead of Ares. And then, you know, y'all will live happily ever after. And then yeah. that's it. But they said actually uh, Final Fantasy VII is going to be pretty much two Blu-ray discs completely full of a game. So they're going to break it up into two parts, Midgar and then everything after. Which to me seems fucking crazy because I just replayed Final Fantasy VII, right? Midgar's I, pretty short, right? right? Yeah. I mean... It took a long time whenever I was a kid to beat Midgar, and I think that was the end of disc one, if I'm not mistaken, I think so. But it was like, Midgar was this one place, and it had a good story, like a condensed story, but then as soon as you get out of Midgar, it's like open world and everywhere is explorable at all time. Like mm -hmm. you can't, you can't actually, later on disc three, I think you can go back into Midgar if you get this key, and you can go back in there. So like, there's so much shit and after Midgar that I don't see how they're going to put all that. If they're putting all of Midgar on one Blu-ray disc, I don't see how they're going to do all the rest of it on another Blu-ray disc and not have like three discs still. I don't see how they're going to do it, man. But that looked really cool. The game, the, the fighting system looks really good. Like as far as they're doing a, uh, like Cloud has a sword so he can do really good close range stuff. But then Barrett, like there was this, uh, there's this, um, a bad guy like a monster or something that like jumped on the walls and was like really far away from you so cloud couldn't do anything but like throw materia at him and uh barrett's like over there like blasting the shit out of him with his gatling gun it looks really really clean man and you can swap between which character you're wanting to control and like uh you can you can kind of button mash but there's like there's different it's just it looks like a really streamlined combat fighting system like, like instead I like of having it. a chance to for the enemy to miss you, you can dodge or like yeah. guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it looks really, really clean. 
And it looks like, I mean, even if you are good at dodging and stuff, there's going to be some shit that's going to hit you from bosses that can just obliterate you anyways. Mm. I'm excited to see how they make some of the some of the notable characters, like Emerald Weapon. How the fuck are they going to make that guy in, like, I don't know. I, mm. <clears throat> from, I don't think I seen, saw any of the summons either. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I saw any of the summons on the E3. <clears throat> But there's that. There's so much stuff that they haven't actually shown in the in the actual uh, E3 gameplay that I... There's a lot of unanswered questions on it. But also something that we just saw was Breath of the Wild's getting a sequel. That's exciting to me. Yeah. I, like, I was so late to the game, and like I just finished Breath of the Wild this year. Yeah. So, like, for me to see that, I'm just like, what? Mm-hmm. And from the looks of the trailer, it was only like a short little cinematic trailer, but it looks to me like it's going to be directly after yeah. the events of yeah. what happened in Breath of the Wild, which is really cool because a lot of... Did you get it? Caught no, him for a second. But the, like, not going over <laughs> there. He escaped. Yeah. <laughs> but like the... Uh, a lot of sequels don't do that nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's some kind of weird random side story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, mm -hmm. Characters you've never heard of. Mm -hmm. But this looks like it's directly after. And I think that they knew that they needed to do that with the way that they released Zelda games before. Because mm -hmm. most of them have never mm -hmm. been that way. Yeah, yeah. It's always some alternate timeline or yeah. some different tale of a different hero mm -hmm. that's kind of like Link but yeah. not. Yeah, exactly. And this one looks like it's directly... Which they did such a good job on Breath of the Wild, and that's why I think they're calling it Breath of the Wild 2, or like the sequel to Breath of the Wild, instead of it being like, you know... Another uh, thing that I kind of heard that was kind of like a fun fact about Breath of the Wild was it's kind of like a remake of the original Legend of Zelda. Mm -hmm. Huh. But I'm pretty sure that's what they said. By the way the story went mm -hmm. because like in the original legend of zelda ganon was kind of like this entity that was like chaos yeah and that's sort of what happened in breath of the wild mm -hmm. and there's that's a lot cool. of similarities between the story of the original one for regular nintendo and not and breath, breath of the wild it was like the one before that or not breath of the wild not linked to the past yeah. just, just zelda yeah cool i don't know man i'll have to go back and replay it because i've got the uh i've got like that um uh, Nintendo Classic. It's actually a lot of fun. I went back yeah. and played it recently as well, and it's a lot more fun than you think. Yeah. I love old games, man. Link to the Past is kind of what I grew up on. Dude, so I that really one get is into, so freaking good. It was, dude. The one I ended up reading that last year, I guess. Mm -hmm. So clean. And I'll tell you something funny about Link to the Past. I never beat it whenever I was a kid, and I went back and played it um, like five, six years ago. I went back and played it, and I never knew that once you beat Ganon in the first little castle, that there was a whole other world after yeah, that. the dark world. So, yeah, I was like, oh, I beat the game. Wait, what the fuck? And then yeah. I get, like, a whole other world. So it's the same world. It's just dark. And, like, you had to do all the same shit. And everything else. It was so freaking mind-blowing for mm -hmm. me whenever I first played it. And I thought I was, like, at the cusp of beating the game. I just never <laughs> beat it whenever I was a kid. Nope, not even close, dude. That game was huge. But, yeah, I like Nintendo's doing their uh, presentation right now, and I'm really stoked to see what all they do with that. It's gonna There's be good. another game that I just love. Mm -hmm. Dying Light 2. Mm -hmm. Did you see it? That, yeah, that, yeah. That's going to be so Looks good. So cool. I played the, Dying Light, the first one, was mm -hmm. one of the very few first games that I got for PS4. Yeah. Because it was on sale on the PlayStation Store, mm -hmm. and I downloaded it from that, and I played the hell out of that game. It was yeah, so yeah. fun. Like, one of the better, one of the best first-person zombie games I've ever played, dude. Yeah, like you had your different skill trees. Like you could go there's like combat and then gadgets, mm -hmm. and then like um, acrobats kind of mm -hmm. where it helped like you're running and jumping and like yeah you could slide farther. It looks or, so good. Like you can slide and things. kick. You could slide and kick them in the kneecap and mm -hmm. it would hobble the zombies <laughs> yeah, or whatever. That's cool. Or you could like run and do a drop kick and mm -hmm. it would like hit like a bunch of. Yeah, Hobbies. is that a Squaresoft release? I don't know, cause I think uh, I think it, I think it has Square been Enix during Square Microsoft during okay. the Microsoft presentation. But I, I saw the I saw the video of the E three thing. <clears throat> it looks so good. Yeah, like definitely. you play as a new a new character, but like mm. the way that it is now is like they're basically the world is kind of trying to semi rebuild mm -hmm. after this infection. Mm -hmm. So there's like different factions of people that have like gathered together and like rose up to yeah. 
you know, and they have different morals, and you can like help. These are the people that give you side quests and stuff, mm -hmm. and like different things that you do for these groups affect the city, yeah, or the environment. Dude, this makes so crazy. like if you if there's these people that need to turn on this water supply to get water to their people or something like you end up turning it on and it opens up different areas yeah, different because you turn the water on. Yeah, yeah it's gonna be crazy. I don't I like I love zombie games, Left 4 Dead and stuff like that were always really fun, but there's never really for me at least been a good zombie game that had like a really good unique story that was like open world this one's and stuff. Dead. That'd be cool. Yeah. I have to check that out. Yeah, I, I mean I know that they had done like they had a uh special edition that they released mm -hmm. that had like different DLC and stuff and mm -hmm. you could do a bunch of different things. It was kinda like a whole new game almost. Yeah. But Dude, it was so fun. State of Play being out right now for the PlayStation, I think it's going to be, like, the sales that they've got on there. I, I went through it last night and looked at it. Like, I want to buy so much shit. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, my wallet hates me right now. <laughs> it's like, Reeves, just stop. Dude, but, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of really good games. I'm excited to see what the rest of E3 holds for it, because... And then Microsoft also announced their mm -hmm. uh, new system coming out next year. Oh, shit. How am I not even seeing this? Yeah. What is it going to be called? Um, have not I think it was called Project Scarlet. So Scarlet. they don't have a name for it yet. Yeah. But, I mean... Fifth I don't June. know, man. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I feel like... To be honest with you, I feel like Play or Sony and PlayStation has had it on lock in the yeah. past few years. Mm -hmm. Like... The PlayStation Two and Xbox were so close. They were to, yeah. the, to the to the power, and then the PlayStation Three and Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty came out, and then Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty hobbled themselves bad. Yeah, because the, the issues freaking red ring of death that out. they had. So that automatically bumped PlayStation Three mm -hmm. up there, even though those two were pretty close. Yeah. And then PS Four came out, and it was just miles ahead of Xbox mm -hmm. One, in my opinion, just yeah. miles. Well, the exclusives. Yeah, I mean Bloodborne, everything you God, can think of. Bloodborne. The graphics, the abilities of the system was mm -hmm. better, and from what Sony has said recently about their new system, mm -hmm. it's just gonna be that much farther ahead of Xbox, I, just, I believe. I wonder. I don't know. For me, it's almost hard for me to justify buying a new system. So they're gonna obviously they're gonna have to do something really good to justify like making the PlayStation Five instead of like the PS Four Pro. Mm -hmm. I agree, I get why they did that, because they're remastering a lot of stuff for the 4K TVs and stuff. But, like, if the current generation is capable of upping its graphic cards like that, wow, I was, like, 10 miles away from that guy. But if the current generation of PlayStations is capable of keeping up with, like, anything that they can do in the TV now, like, what, I guess for me, I don't see what the point of introducing a PlayStation 5 whenever you've got so much but I guess it's just mm -hmm. my mind not really comprehending and grasping <clears throat> what they can do cuz I don't know the stuff like I saw some specs on it mm -hmm. and it's going to have a solid state drive mm -hmm. which Fast is going to make load times almost non-existent the especially the drive that they were talking about that's going to be in it yeah. like everything that's in the PlayStation 5 is most of the stuff is being specifically made for it so mm -hmm. like it's top of the line companies making top of the line stuff specifically cool. for the PlayStation. Well just a solid state. But like, you know, mm. they that's And it's gonna be backwards compatible. That's huge too. Mm. Yeah. But how, know, how far back Yeah, though? I don't know how far. Yeah. I don't think they said, but I mean at least PS four. Yeah. I mean that's, well, that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. If you have, you know, because it sucks every copies. time you buy a new fucking system, it's like, well, get rid of all the old games. Yeah. Can't play those anymore. <laughs> that really is always mm -hmm. sucked, dude. And then hope that they release some on classics mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. But That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. And I, if they could go really far back with it, I think that they would probably lose money on it because there's so many old copies of games floating around that they can get from elsewhere that they wouldn't be able to get on the PlayStation Network. So they'd probably be like, oh, well, can't release the PlayStation Classic. Like, it can't play PlayStation Classic games, which it probably totally fucking could. Yeah. Like, there's no reason that nowadays that systems can't go back and read those old files. It's like... Yeah. I don't know. It's like going back and like your computer can look at MP3s, but it can't look at waves. Why not? Like it totally can. It's got <laughs> capability of doing it, but so I don't know. That'd be really cool. I'm interested in seeing what they're gonna do. I mean, solid state and backwards compatible. That's awesome. But I mean, there's a reason that Sony isn't at E3 this year. Yeah, they were. You know, they it. they have all, they're getting all of their stuff ready to just destroy everyone. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to be grouped together with all of these other yeah. groups. I think yeah. I think it was a smart move on their part because yeah. after all of the E3 hype has gone down, 
Sony's just going to be like, <laughs> and it's just yeah. going to be all of them. How about blow your whole fucking world up? Yeah, they don't have to worry about, <laughs> yeah. oh, well, this company's releasing this now. It's going to be like, well, this is everything we got. Yeah. And I think, really I think bit. that either God of War or we'll be new. Bloodborne 2 is going to be a launch title for PS5. <sighs> I can see that. That's man. what I'm hoping for. Yeah, it, I would definitely. I mean, I don't know. I mean, what else would have so much hype behind it? Like, Bloodborne 2, I. Bloodborne, for me, fucking you amazing. You could sell your entire PlayStation 5 stock yeah. with Bloodborne 2. Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> At least in my opinion. I know a lot of other people that like think that way too. So I just I don't know, man. I don't know. God any of other War titles was voted that... game of the year. Game of the year, yep. of the year. and then that game was the shit. Freaking well, I mean they could do a sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn, mm -hmm. which would be huge because that, that be game huge. was freaking amazing. And it was massive. That was a massive <clears throat> game too. I love that game. Yeah. Dude, now right now actually ahead the, of its uh, time. Way, dude. It was insane. And then uh I think that's if it's not free, it's like really cheap right now. I think it's like nine dollars for the complete edition, which has like three DLC stories. Mm -hmm. Dude, I love that game. And you can go in there and like kill all the bandit camps. So good. So good. I, I think I, I platinum that. I did so many cool things in that game as far mm -hmm. as like traps and yeah. that that was the beauty of that game to me is like if you were hunting like a specific beast for like parts or whatever or you needed a quest mm -hmm. like just whatever the giant like t-rex looking thing yeah was. like you could so cool. like grab some minions first mm -hmm. like ch uh, turn them to your help or, or whatever and then like set up like trip mines yeah and, like, stuff like that and then lure the beast you. over toward yeah. that and mm -hmm. like you could do and you didn't even have to so do shit. many things yeah. in that game i used to love going into the uh to the thief well like camps and stuff. Mm -hmm. That was like yeah. The bandit favorite. camps were really really fun. Yeah, they were really hard too, man. I think those were sometimes harder than actually the mm -hmm. bosses were. But you know, like that game and uh, the Lord of the Rings games, in my opinion, were kind of close. Like mm -hmm. the Lord of the Rings. Um, what was the last one that came out? <sighs> Shadow of War. Yeah, I didn't get into that one as much as I did the first I one. I got it when it came out, and I still have it. But I, yeah, <clears throat> like. The crappy part about that game is right is when it came out, it was it had a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. Like it had a it was plagued with issues, and it, it was to the point to where I stopped playing it because it, there's stuff that made me so mad. Yeah. Like, um, one of the issues was there was this big glitch to where if you didn't do this certain side quest before you started. Um, you, Cause what you can do is you can turn followers mm -hmm. and make them get get them on your side, yeah. And they'll become part of your army, like generals. And you, can, yeah. If you beat one general, you can set your own general up in his spot. Mm -hmm. And like, if you don't do the certain side quest before you start setting up your generals, the glitch was it would just your generals would just go away. Oh, that sucks, like, dude. Jesus Christ. And like, there's yeah. some of these guys that I would that I tracked down specifically for my army. Yeah. And like, I mean, there's a guy that I fought for like probably ten minutes <laughs> because he was immune to all of the stuff that I was mm -hmm. trying to do to him. Yeah. Like, you couldn't flip over him, or you couldn't like yeah. dash him. You couldn't dude, shoot arrows weird. at him. You mm -hmm. couldn't stealth kill him. Yeah. And like, I hunted so him just down. Go in there and brawl to just get him for my army, and he yeah. was gone when I opened my map one time, and I was like. All right, back. I was yeah, like, I, I can't play yeah. this anymore. And that's probably for me <clears throat> as a gamer. That's one of the biggest things that will like turn me off of a game is like your progress being null. For me, like, and in, in old games, that's why I kind of like auto save a lot more now. And if you go back and play like PlayStation classics, like going through Final Fantasy VII, I uh, I went and did what was it that I did? No auto. <laughs> no auto save, man. And there was this ah, that's what it was. I uh, I went and level grinded for a little while, but then I got like a uh, Cloud's ultimate weapon, mm -hmm. and uh, so I went and did all this stuff, level grinded, got like five six extra levels, and then I also got his ultimate weapon. And then I went down and got a little ballsy, and I was like, I'm gonna go level grind at this harder place. So I go down there and get killed, and I didn't even really realize that I got killed. It was one of those like quick. Everybody got killed before I knew what I was doing, mm -hmm. and uh, and I was like, well, shit. And then I was like, how far back did I save? I hit the, like the load thing back up and I was so far back from where oh I saved that because like you can do the sleep feature on like game consoles now so it can just yeah. wake back up and you don't have to save shit. Yeah. So as long as you don't die, like, you're good. Suspends the game. Well, yeah. So like I had just <clears> been sleeping on it for a while and dude, I was back like freaking 15, 20 levels <laughs> and I was like 
two hours of gameplay lost. So if I didn't really genuinely love the game that I was playing, yeah, I would have just been like, well, fuck this, and never played it again. Because I mean, that's what happened with me, and um, I think it was Dark Souls three. Mm -hmm. Like um, God. the power had went out one night. Like I was playing it, mm -hmm. and I mean, I was at least probably 30 or more hours in like Shit. 40 30 or 40 hours yeah. like probably three-fourths of the way through the mm -hmm. game and the power goes out and i'm like well, crap and then it didn't come back on that night so i just like ended up going to bed and yeah. the next day like i load up my playstation and you know it goes through the whole process where mm -hmm. you didn't shut it down yeah, properly yeah. or whatever yeah. And then I get back on there, and my Dark Souls data is corrupted, ah, and I can't recover it. Like it cannot so be recovered because before the or before that time, I hadn't. I took it off auto save to the cloud mm -hmm. because there was a patch for a specific game that I didn't want or something. Yeah, yeah. And so I had my save data back here, and mm -hmm. I was using that, but I never put auto save to the cloud back on, <laughs> and That's none brutal. of my it corrupted my whole data, and I had to start over. <laughs> And it probably took me a while to actually start playing again after yeah. that. Because I was just yeah. like, oh my god. Because it just feels like you just worked that whole time for nothing. Which yeah. is technically what you've done. I so 30-something hours that's gone. Pretty brutal. Dude, that's pretty horrible. <laughs> the Jesus. same thing happened to Willie, though, recently. He was playing, uh... Dang it, what was that game? Hollow Knight. Mm -hmm. And he was, like, almost all the way through the game. And that something so bad, dude. He uh, what he was doing? He was doing this the same thing that we used to do back in the day with uh, Demon Souls or Dark mm -hmm. Souls because of the auto save. Like if we died and we had too many souls, mm -hmm. we'd unplug the power. Yeah, yeah. And it wouldn't auto save, mm -hmm. and you would start right back before where you died. Yeah. And he was doing that with a Hollow Knight because he had a lot of this currency. Mm -hmm. And when you die in Hollow Knight, you lose the currency. Yeah. And I don't think you get it back. I don't think you do. I uh, think there might be a way. Yeah, you kill your your ghost or something. Do you even said? <clears throat> I think. So. I mean, I'm thinking of another game. But like, he had died and he went back to kill his ghost. Ghost and something happened and he fell off this cliff. No shit. And he was like, no. And he unplugged it. And mm -hmm. then whenever he went to reload it, it was corrupted. <sighs> I was like, D and he didn't have it uh, auto save into the cloud either. Yeah. So he lost everything. Shit. <laughs> it's the worst, dude. So, I I, dude. I don't know, man. They just. And there's not really much, I guess, like, this is kind of, like, some user error stuff. Like, I should have saved. Like, yours, it's not really user error, I guess. I don't know, man. But, fuck, that's, like, the worst thing as a gamer. All of your work to be for nothing. It's, like, yeah. the worst thing, dude. And, uh... Yeah. Especially in freaking, like, Dark Souls. Fuck. In you Dark Souls, You have to go Souls, through so insane. much adversity to get through that game. Yeah, to, wherever to you're take at. an inch, you have to, like, give up, like, <laughs> freaking miles, dude. Like, it was like getting kicked in the nuts by mm -hmm. freaking The Big Show or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> just getting stomped right in your nutsack. Mm -hmm. But, I don't know, man. I, I'm really excited about some of the stuff that's been released on E3. And then you were talking about uh, the dude from freaking Game oh, of Thrones. Oh, yeah. Freaking and, uh, Elden Software. Ring. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. For I, gotta, that. I gotta see. I haven't. The I mean, trailer. they only had like maybe it was like maybe a minute and thirty or two mm -hmm. minute long cinematic trailer. I gotta see it. But it's from the same guy that is do, that done all the Dark Souls, like mm -hmm. the Miyazaki or whatever mm -hmm. his name is. And that guy is such a freaking masterminded person. Yeah, like, <laughs> and George R. R. Martin from Game of Thrones. Yeah. They. It said basically a, a new world created by these two guys. And <clears throat> like just from the cinematic, I was like. It's gonna be huge. I mean, I already have it pre-ordered in my brain. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's action. Got, it, it said action RPG, which I guess that's technically what Dark Souls is yeah. considered. So mm -hmm. I'm hopeful that it's going to be a very Dark Souls esque. I think that guy that the style of his games are so like trial filled that I don't know. I don't think that's something that he could just put down for another yeah. game you know what i mean that's so instilled in him and i love like if you watch some of his interviews he's a very particular person and it's freaking <clears throat> awesome like i love his style he's like i don't make games for people to have a little bit of enjoyment he's like for me the most um the most fulfilling type games are ones that you have to earn he's uh -huh. like you know if you go through a game and you just beat it and it's all easy and stuff like that it might be fun a little while but it's not going to be like an actual achievement you know and he's like i feel like with my games you have to earn victory and he's like that's more rewarding and uh 
Dude, that's I don't know. That's so he's true, like the, dude. He's like the Hideo Kojima of that genre. Yeah, because yeah. Kojima is the same way. Mm-hmm. He's very particular. Everything that happens in a Kojima j- Kojima game is because he wanted it to be yeah. that way. Yeah, there's nothing that you're like, oh, I wonder if this is supposed to be that way. No, if something happens in that game, it's because he wrote it to be that way yeah. specifically. Which that's how it should be, man. If more <laughs> if more game writers were hands on or were allowed to be hands on, I'm sure they would be hands on. If some companies like EA didn't just shit all over there. Dude, that's ideas. another thing. Oh my god. I saw the Star Wars um, Jedi Order or whatever it was called mm-hmm. coming out for EA. Uh-huh. And like, it kind of looks okay, mm-hmm. but then there's some parts where I'm like, this looks pretty lame to me. Yeah. And I'm like, they haven't made a really good Star Wars game yet. Like, regain control from EA. Yeah. Because so far, they all up, dude. screwed everything Star Wars up. Mm-hmm. Just screwed it up. Yeah, battle, uh, what was it? Give somebody else a chance to make a good Star Wars game for once. That's yeah. not a piece of shit. Uh, yeah, because he's really screwing up a lot of games, dude. Like, and even, uh, are they, I can't remember if they're the one, no, it's WB Games. That's over, um, uh, <laughs> Mortal Kombat? EA yeah, is Warner over Bros. somebody else. Or they're not over Mortal Kombat, yeah. I don't think, are they? No. I don't think they are. I don't think so. But, uh. Either way, man, WB Games kind of, like, been fucking up Mortal Kombat for me. I don't know exactly what's going on with that, but it's just been... Ugh. Yeah. It's crazy. But, man... They like the ease of use. Mm-hmm. They don't... They like it to be more catered to the casual player. Yeah. So, yeah. combos are easier, moves mm-hmm. are easier, everything's easier. And, and just, it doesn't give you a good chance to actually be advanced. Most combos that you see in these games are just cheap. Yeah, it's just like <clears throat> down back X, mm-hmm. down back X, and then or it's like the same X combat X-square. style as like the Injustice games. Yes, like exactly. Took, and I feel like they really style. just like took that game and put different skins on it and called it Mortal Kombat. It's pretty much what I feel like they've done. It's, yeah. And um, ever since it? they did Mortal Kombat versus DC. Yes, that, that's, that's exactly, when it went downhill, dude. That's exactly where it started. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> it just as soon as they did that, it's just been like. <clears throat> Just nothing, man. But I don't know. I'm excited to see what else comes out of E3. This is gonna be a good year for it. I think there's gonna be a lot of good stuff. And then, yeah. like you Borderlands said, Borderlands Three is gonna probably be my most hyped game for this year. Borderlands mm-hmm. Three and Death Stranding. That yeah, yeah, Death Stranding. Death That's Stranding true. is just something Shit. that I can't comprehend. Yeah. And I don't think anybody else that has mm-hmm. seen any of the trailers can comprehend. But it, it looks incredible. Yeah. It's the most original game design I've probably ever seen in my life. It looks pretty cool. And then did you see that, uh, <clears throat> what, is it Cyberpunk 2007? Oh, yeah, I totally about that one with Ken Reeves. Yeah. And everybody, I saw the meme out the other day. It was like, uh, or I guess it was today, but it was, uh, it was like, oh, look, it's the John Wick skin from uh, Fortnite. I was like, fucking stupid. I saw so one stupid. that was like 2019 is the year of Reeves. Mm-hmm. And it showed Keanu Reeves, like he was in John Wick 3 mm-hmm. and in, in the video game and mm-hmm. stuff. And I was like, I'm super glad about that because he's dude, such a nice he guy. He is, man. He is, and he just still rides the subway like a normal dude. He's freaking awesome. He's he's like came up from adversity. Like John Wick was the first John Wick was his redemption movie. Yeah, but and it was kind of like his life in a way because mm-hmm. like he's had a lot of tragedy happen in his life. Like his first wife, I don't think he's remarried since her, mm-hmm. but she they got pregnant with her kid, and she had a stillborn mm-hmm. and then so his first child you know that yeah. happened Shit. and then like not even a few months after that his wife died in a car wreck my god man and then all like all this crap kept happening to him and then yeah. finally like he hit the john wick movie and like if you look at the john wick movie that's mm-hmm. like him yeah that's keanu reeves right yeah there. like he had to go through all of that freaking keanu reeves man he and then he's still call. like such an awesome yeah down to earth yeah nice guy and he dude uh if you watch john Wick three he has like uh these motorcycles in it and that's his bikes like he he makes those motorcycles he makes a fucking wow. awesome 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 crotch rocket it looks so cool so clean one of these days that's how i'll know i'm successful if i own one of uh keanu reeves bikes. <laughs> nice it's but yeah i'm sick. happy for him i think it's yeah. awesome that he's in that game and he got to announce it yeah it's really cool yeah dude Keanu Reeves. I still don't know about that game, though. I haven't really seen enough of it for me to be like, yes, I like it, no, I don't like it. I think it looks I've cool. I've seen but... a little bit of gameplay from it from one of these things like E3 that was like maybe last year or sometime mm-hmm. earlier this year. Yeah. And it looks 
pretty good. Yeah. But not enough for me to give a judgment. Yeah. Everything else has been totally cinematic. And I mean, the cinematics look cool as hell. Yeah. But. Oh. Wow. God, he, got, he looks so slow. I but know. Then I smack at him and it's just like. Go. It's like any of those movies that like, uh, like people shrink and then like humans are just so slow <laughs> like oh. yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much but uh well man i guess that's guys dude like you got anything you want to throw out there before we roll mm. people are frantically trying to call me i don't know what the hell is going on well, in the outside world here if anybody gets to this point yeah in the podcast yeah if you've made it so <laughs> far we have an announcement um kid cult mm-hmm. was on our podcast it was last week, but mm. we haven't actually put the video out. It'll probably be out whenever this is yeah, released. Yeah. But um, they're an awesome band, great group of people, mm-hmm. and they performed uh, Hex Sessions with us, and it was phenomenal. Like, yeah. <laughs> I really hope that they start getting some recognition and making it far out there, because I have yeah, like, likewise, man. that sick and sad song of theirs. Mm-hmm. Like, it's been stuck in my head ever since they played it. Mm-hmm. And, like, that says a lot, because... Yeah, like I usually I'm flooded with music in my life because mm-hmm. I love music so much and for a song that comes from a local band or whatever to stick in my head you know it's pretty big yeah but yeah they deserve recognition and I yeah that I hope that we can help them reach reach that dude no joke yeah <laughs> and like we've got I, I don't know I I hope that that's a big focus I think that's something that we're gonna kind of work more towards is like getting more uh, more musicians on here as well too like having these tech sessions that mm-hmm. i freaking love it dude it's super fun for me because i don't necessarily go to shows as often as i used to especially whenever i was in a band because mm-hmm. i was in shows like every weekend but it really is awesome to be around music again like that yeah <laughs> like being yeah. in the presence of actual music and instruments and playing and not like hearing it through like a radio yeah. stereo or whatever and the cool thing is too is like with like <clears throat> music and which is probably one reason I like fighting so much too is like it's hard to fake um, like your passion for it you know what I mean like mm-hmm. it, especially with a songwriter like in these sessions that we're doing like the acoustic stuff it's all kind of like stripped down and it's just the person and their song they wrote so like you can hear in their voice you can hear in their lyrics you can hear in the music like exactly what they're feeling you know and like in fighting too like it's just raw it's like two dudes just beating like putting their selves out there you know and like that's one thing that i love about the sessions is it's raw like that it's the it's real and that's what music is about Mm -hmm. like it's just straight music real bare bones raw yeah and you can feel it Mm -hmm. So either way, I hope you guys are really enjoying the Sessions videos as well, too. If you have made it this far, go back and find them, because Kid Colt by this time should have already had three episodes on there. And then we've got a couple of other artists. Uh, Andrew Hall is on there as well, too. Fucking awesome song. And uh, we've got some Ben Pepperall songs on there. And we're about to have a couple more Ben Pep songs. We're about to go to their place on Thursday, actually, this week. But yeah. That just echoed in the drums. You guys take it easy, man. You got anything else you want to throw at them? Uh, go get some tacos. Taco Bell! If this isn't Tuesday, when you see this, mm-hmm. get some tacos anyways, because it's yeah. Tuesday right now. It's Tuesday <laughs> somewhere, guys. Hell yeah. But alright, man. Y'all be good. Subscribe and shit. That's all I got.